I am very excited to bring you this game today. Welcome to Chess Dog. Today we have a game between Tani Adewumi and Levi Rosman. Now, you may know Tati Adewumi is an 11-year-old FIDE master with one international master norm, and he is currently working on his second international master norm at a July norm event in New York City. After five rounds, he has four and a half points and is leading. In other words, he is really crushing it and there is a good chance he's going to get that second IM norm in this tournament, and I, I hope he does. His opponent in this game is Levy Rosman, an international master who you may know better by the name of Gotham Chess, one of the most successful YouTubers and streamers that there's ever been in chess. And I really wanted to share this game with you. Uh, he has covered it, but I have a couple of other points uh, and observations I'd like to make. It's really a fascinating game. So let's begin. Levy Rosman has white and Tani Adewumi has the black pieces. e4, c5, knight f3, e6, exchange in the center. We have our standard open Sicilian formation. When black has played e6, that means it's not going to be a dragon or a knight orf, but it could be a lot of other different openings. Knight to c6, the time on of move order. Bishop to f4, the idea is to take advantage of these weak and dark squares at d6 and perhaps c7. Uh, there is no fork with the move e5, by the way because then just knight takes c6, and it hits the queen, and you, you, you don't win anything. Uh, so d6 is played to help sort of shore up that d6 weakness. Now the bishop at f8 is defending it. Knight takes c6, pawn takes, and c4, and creating a sort of Maroxy bind structure, uh, not unlike a hedgehog formation. Um, but the difference is that the knight has been exchanged, and there's a pawn at c6. And this gives black a little more flexibility. Maybe they can play d5 at some point, but it gives white some extra ideas too. The pawn at c4 in some positions can advance to c5 and really wreck black's structure and weaken those dark squares. But suffice to say, the main target for white, for levy, is going to be the d6 pawn. That's the most vulnerable point in black's position. Rook to b8, this is the move uh, Fabiano Caruana played when he was faced with this position. Queen to c2, defending the b2 pawn, and now queen to f6, attacking the bishop and the pawn, and forcing the move bishop to c1 to save the bishop and cover b2. Knight to e7, and in my database, Tani plays a novelty here. Knight to e7, the idea is pretty simple, pretty obvious, to play the pawn at c6 to c5, and then to play knight c6 d4, and plant the knight on this weakened d4 square. Knight to c3, c5, the process of moving that knight continues. And now bishop to e3, played to help control the d4 square, knight to c6. Now, this is a very important moment. Now, it's very easy when it's not your game to look at moves and be critical of them, you know, here. But Levy Rosman's next move, which is a computer recommendation, but from a human perspective, I really, really do not like this move. He castles long. And the king... <laughs> I mean, the rook contributes, obviously, to controlling d4 and aims at d6. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. But from a practical standpoint, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice the relationship between this rook and this queen and how they both aim at this b2 pawn right next to white's king. And I want you to notice as the game progresses, that relationship between the rook and queen never goes away at any point. Those two pieces hover over at at b2 forever. And if you're a super grandmaster, maybe you can defend in a situation like this, but if you're anything less, you're really making your life extremely hard, and one mistake, and you can be in big trouble. And uh, I think castling long here, while a computer may like it, from a human standpoint, I, I don't like it. This relationship between the queen and rook and aiming at b2 never goes away, ever, in the entire game. Bishop to d7 helps control the a4 uh, square. If the knight moves to d4, the queen might want to check at a4. Another possibility was just to play e5. Then both knights can go to centralized squares. And it's a game. Bishop to d7, knight to b5, aiming at d6. As we said, that's the primary weakness in black's position. Knight to b4, hitting the queen, and now queen to b1. So the queen is on a very passive square. It turns out the queen could go to d2. Uh, the pawn at a2 cannot be taken for tactical reasons if he takes king over, and if the knight moves back bishop to c5 with threats of uh, mate on d7. 
Uh, but after queen to d8 defending d7, uh, black's actually doing somewhat okay. The knight goes to a2 with check, then a6, and then after knight d6, bishop takes d6. And if the queen takes, then knight to c3 check would actually fork the king and the rook. So white would be forced to take the knight, but then bishop to a4 hits the rook. And white is a bit better here, but very hard to calculate. And it's very hard to find over the board. Uh, so queen to b1 is what was played. Rook to b6, defending the d6 pawn. h4. Now this is a very strong practical move. It's not the computer's number one suggestion, but it's a, it's a good move. The idea is he's setting up the, the bishop moving to g5 and making life for the queen very uncomfortable. If a bishop moved to e7, it could potentially exchange itself off for the bishop, uh, keep the king in the middle of the board, for example. Bishop to e7. a3 kicks the knight away. Knight goes to a6. In uh, Gotham's video, he shows why knight to c6 was technically playable, but not practical. Queen to c2, trying to activate the queen, bring it out. h5. And this is a strategic mistake from Tani because it gives white further access over g5. You can't play h6 anymore, so now the bishop would be very comfortable on that square. Rook to h3. The beginning of a good idea, but this is the, the seed of another problem that ends up in, uh, in Levy's position. Notice the relationship between this bishop and this rook. It's not a problem yet, but it could become one. g6, bishop to g5, hits the queen. The queen goes to e5. If the queen had gone to g7, the rook could go to d3, and the pressure on d6 becomes unbearable at that point. So queen to e5 helps keep some defense <clears throat> excuse me, of that pawn. Bishop to d2, rerouting the bishop, so it can skewer the queen and the rook. It doesn't quite skewer yet because the queen can check when it moves, but uh, it's still a dangerous threat. Short castle, now bishop to a5 to kick the rook away from the defense of the d6 pawn. Rook to b7. And here's the next move that, uh, that probably is not the best move, in addition to long castling, which is computer-likes, but not, it's not a good human move, in my opinion. He plays the move g3, and it in, invites the question, what does this rook at h3 think about this move? The rook probably doesn't like it very much. The rook's mobility is completely taken away, and the potential threat is still there. A better move is probably rook to e3, uh, but I would say the combination of short castling and g3 are really the seeds of black's trouble in this game. So after g3, and the reason he does it, he, he's threatening to trap the queen. He's basically taking away the flight square from the queen. Uh, so there is a, a tactical threat here, but strategically, I don't think it works real well. Queen to g7. Notice the queen and rook. Still aiming at b2. That never goes away at any point. It's always there. Bishop to c3 hits the queen. Queen to h6. Bishop to d2. Queen to g7. And here, probably taking the draw was the best choice um, for white. Uh, but he plays f4. And he wants to make it so that there's no, there are no checks here. But now d5. And Levy even says in his coverage of this game that he was really surprised by this move. And there really is no uh, easy solution for white. Either he has to deal with the vulnerability of this knight at b5, losing its protection, or allow a pawn moving to d4, a protected passed pawn. It used to be a weakness on d6, now it would become a tower of strength on d4. Uh, bishop to c3, uh, it, computers find this move rook to h2, removing the rook from the aim of the bishop, but black still has an edge at this point but it's still a playable position. d4 is a possibility. Hard move to find. Uh, but after bishop to c3, black is winning, and Tani pretty much plays computer perfect at this point. If, if you get someone like Tani Adewumi, who can attack a lot, uh, very well, uh, you give him a little wiggle room, give him a few combinations, he's going to find the right sequence of moves. Yeah, he, he really is. His tactics are just really sharp. And after this move, d4 is played, bishop to d2, and now knight to b8, threatening a6. Everything is pretty much forced from this point. Threatening a6, trapping the b5 knight. So Levy plays e5 to allow the knight to move to d6 when it gets kicked, which is what happens. a6, knight to d6, bishop takes, pawn takes, but now this very strong move, the best move certainly on the board, e5, unleashing the bishop against the rook, 
but more importantly, making the f5 square available to the bishop, where it can attack the queen and put all kinds of pressure on the squares surrounding white's king. The rook moves, and then bishop to f5. And there's really nothing much that can be done at this point. Bishop to d3, and now this is really a beautiful combination, very, very smooth. I mean, just really well executed. e4, bishop takes e4, and now this in-between move, boom, d3. And look who's meeting at the quarterback down here. The rook at b7, the queen at g7. So the queen obviously cannot take here because that's mate. But after bishop to d3, bishop takes d3, and that's it. He cannot retake the bishop because queen takes b2 mate. It's astonishing that this has hovered over the board the entire game. From the very beginning, the relationship between the queen, the rook, and the b2 square is always there. And the queen has to, cannot retake the piece. Plays queen to c3, and then queens are exchanged, and then bishop takes pawn, and down a piece with insufficient counterplay. Uh, international master Levy Rosman resigned in this position. So uh, I think at the end of the day, he said in his video that he, he, he feels like he's playing well, but then missed one or two moves. But I think when you put your king in that kind of jeopardy, and you, it just, so eventually you're just going to make a mistake. Unless you're a world-class super GM, you're going to make a mistake when you put yourself in that vulnerable position. Any, any of us would end up making a mistake, particularly against a strong attacker like Tani. Well, I hope you enjoyed the game, and I look forward to looking at some of his other games in this tournament where he's playing very, very well. See you again soon in Chess Dog. Goodbye.